Michael, you have been involved from the very beginning with the Nordex Group. But could you tell a bit on how you got involved in this company and especially with the first projects, the N27 and N29? I started in 93 and um, I, I did it in Denmark. It was a Danish company in these days. I was not the first engineer, but I started uh, as more or less second engineer in um, the design of the N29. If you look back at the uh, at your early design, you said in, an, in, in during the preparation, it was called in German an, an Eisenschwein. That means it was quite heavy. And how would you, yeah. if you look at the, uh, you know, the historic design and if you compare it with the current situation, how heavy would the, the turbine be if you had scaled it up from that, <laughs> that original design? Yes. Um... The tower top mass of the N29 or the N27 was about 16.6 uh, .6 tons. Uh, so if you if you multiply that um, uh, with uh, 35, what is the difference in uh, rotor area? A turbine of uh, the N163, which we are uh, now designing, would have a, a, a tower top mass of more than 550 tons, what is in fact not the case. Uh, the turbine has uh, has a tower top mass of about 250 tons. So uh, this is what we have learned over the years. So uh, um, the, um, of course, um, to, to make uh, wind uh, energy competitive, you have to improve. And uh, this is what we have learned over the years to, to design machines which are lighter. So that is an impressive achievement. Then we can say that is not only for your company, but also for several others. And if we then turn to Axiona Wind Power, how did you uh, develop this product? And what did you have in mind? Was that because uh, Axiona is originally a developer? And so what inspired you for this new product, especially? It was 1999 when we started the design of the first AW60 1.3 megawatt wind turbine. And the main aim of this design was to design a robust wind turbine for the hard condition we had in, in, in Navarra, Sevilla. Because we installed wind turbines uh, in, on top of the mountains with negative wind shear with high turbulence level and uh, we we realized that we need some kind of adaptation of the of the design to these specific conditions yeah yeah and uh, when did you install this prototype we installed the first prototype in in august the year 2000. oh that's impressive and now let us go back to uh to uh, nordex where the development uh, started with this uh, first uh, 250 kilowatt machine and then there was also a 150 kilowatt version and one of the two was at one stage the largest turbine in the world. Uh, uh, yeah. Michael, can you say about that? Uh, is that not remarkable that such a small turbine could be the largest turbine in the world? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Norex decided in, in, in these days, in the early um, um, 90s or in the uh, late 80s, uh, we have had only uh, 50 kilowatt machines, uh, 75 kilowatt machines, uh, 90 kilowatt machines. And Nordex uh, decided because uh, they were, have not been the first in, in the Danish market to start with 250 and uh, to place, uh, yeah, uh, a milestone far far out uh, so uh, uh, the others uh, should should look at that and uh, that works uh, it works as well with the uh, uh, n52 with a thousand uh, mega a thousand kilowatt machine it was in these days as well the biggest uh, serial uh, machine in the world could you explain a bit on the importance of the n117 2.4 megawatt for nordex and also for the wind industry, as an as an example, what was then followed by several competitors in the year afterwards. 
Yeah, the N117 was a very important milestone for us. It was a low wind speed uh, turbine uh, on a rating of 2.4 megawatt. And we have introduced with this large rotor um, carbon uh, fibers in the rotor blade for the first time. Um, due to the fact that the rotor area was very, very large compared to competitors in these days, uh, we have had a big success with this machine and uh, uh, it was a best selling product for us. And we still sell some of these machines. It was really an, a milestone product, we would say, and um, that has had many followers in the wind industry. And uh, after that, and um, Miguel, could you could you briefly explain how you made the big step from a 1.5 to a 3 megawatt platform? So, what were the main considerations? And uh, for instance, not developing a 2.5, but immediately bigger. Okay, we realized that 1.5 megawatt was too short for 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 the for the future. So just checking different the market and different versions of other OMs, we decided to move to three megawatt and we started and we installed in the year 2008, the first prototype it was a AW100, 100 meter rotor diameter, three megawatts machine in a concrete tower, 100 meters half height. You said that uh, like this three megawatt machine was installed on an, on an, an in-house developed concrete tower, 100 meters high, and uh, but also the very first machine was already available with a concrete tower. Is that correct? Yes, we tested the concrete tower technology in the 1.5 megawatt wind turbines in the year 2006. So as we realized that a concrete tower, full concrete tower was a good option for keeping the cost of energy and also to have the possibility to install uh, local factories on site, then we decided to start the development of the three megawatt wind turbine with the full uh, concrete tower. Then I would uh, like to move on to the blades. Axiona had an history of an early history of modular blades that you had an that you had an an, an a common inner blade and variable tip sections. Were you one of the first with these ideas, or was that something what was already done? Well, I think we were one of the first ones doing this kind of approach, and it was in the year two thousand and six when we designed and produced our first blade. It was a 37.5 meters blade for the 77 meters roto diameter in the 1.5 megawatt machine. But for class two, but uh, we realized that uh, we need also uh, rotors for class one. So then just from, from the same mold, we got a shorter blade, 34 meters. And later on, when we needed a 82 meter roto diameter, we extend the mold to get the 82 meters. So with the same basic mold, we were, we were able to manufacture 70, 77 and 82 meter rotor diameters. You could then reach some economies of scale by having the inner blade all the time the same. Was that your main consideration? Yes, and also the time to market, because it was easier to uh, introduce a modification in the mold than ordering a completely new mold. In this uh, 35 years, the um, the power rating, if you compare it uh, of the of the first uh, N27 150 kilowatt machine up to the 5.x platform is a factor of 35. That is amazing by itself. And equally amazing for me is, and I have seen that also with other products, that these early designs could produce very enduring. Uh, there are three N27 turbines operating in Hamburg for already 27 years. It shows that uh, also in the past, with limited scientific means, people were able to do really great things, uh, thanks to the skills and dedication of the engineers. And you are two of them. Thank you very much again and wish you all the best.